Glass and Wine Society, and I want to talk to you about the London Roussillon, the, the largest um, single region producing wine in France, and indeed I think it's the largest single region anywhere on the planet. The climate obviously is, is wonderful. It's hot in the summer and not too cold in the winter. Perfect for grapes. And the long, the long dog, you can plant pretty well any grape variety you can think of. And indeed, I think the number of grape varieties planted in the long dog must run into dozens. Um, red wine, white wine, pink wine, fortified wine, sparkling wine, all these things are made in the Long de Roussillon. Dominant grape varieties, well, they tend to change a bit. Um, in the Roussillon, Grenache dominates. The Roussillon is much hotter, really almost baked, and the Grenache absolutely thrives and produces uh, very strong, full-bodied reds and a selection of fortified wines, too. Um, and the white grape varieties, well, there's all the Grenache variants, like Grenache Blanc and Grenache Gris, and a fair bit of, uh, of Macabre as well, which is another grape variety you find in Spain, where it's called Viura. Um, the best wines from the Roussillon, at least the, the most prestigious wines, come from right by the border of Spain, the two little villages of Banyuls and Collioure, and they make fabulous, quite rare wines, and necessarily quite expensive, because of the way they're planted on very steep slopes and where the climate is truly dramatic with tremendous rainstorms and hail and everything else. Um, the Languedoc is slightly more benign and I would split the Languedoc in really two, two ways, east and west. Um, the east is much closer in style to the Rhone and produces actually Rhone-style wines. And the further east you go, um, the closer the wines are to Côte du Rhone. So if I take one or two appellations, Pic saint Lou, for instance, is a haven for the Syrah grape, also Grenache and Carignan, of course, but Syrah produces fabulous wines. And then as you go further west, um, the climate changes, becomes drier, and the wines are a little more austere. And you start with, uh, let's say, with Fougère or Saint-Chignon in the middle, and it produces very strong, pungent, very finely, finely bodied wines. And then you go further west, you end up with the Minervois, and the further west you go, the more dominant the Atlantic becomes, the cooler the climate and the fresher the wines. And then further on, you've got Cabernet which is right next to Carcassonne, uh, Cassoli country, of course. And Cabernet, in fact, have within the appellation the choice of Bordeaux grape varieties and Rhone grape varieties. And then when you're in Carcassonne, you're on the River Aude, which is the main sort of river. And if you follow the river upstream, you in fact go south towards the Pyrenees, and you end up in white wine country, and in particular in sparkling wine country. Um, around the little town of Limoux, um, sparkling wine has been made successfully since 1531 uh, from great varieties like the Mosac and more recently from Chenin and Chardonnay and make absolutely lovely wines that are not too expensive and well worth trying. Unlike better known sparkling wines, Limu has the advantage of being slightly less acid. And I tend to always recommend my friends who are slightly sensitive to high acidity to go for, for Limu. The long dock in a nutshell is difficult to do because it's so huge and so vast, but it's a fantastic place. The wines are still relatively inexpensive. They offer tremendous value for money and long dock wine should be in anybody's wine cellar. Thank you.